Um, so hi guys, I'm Jennifer. I am the account exec for GigDI and my colleague Harvey is on here too. He's our growth manager. Um, so freelance platforms and how the market is changing is what we're going to run through with you today. I'll just give you a bit of an overview of recruitment pre and post COVID, just to give you a bit of history and how our platform actually came to be and why digital marketplaces are very important to the market today. So both Harvey and I worked in recruitment previously before joining Gigt. And historically, the process of gaining a role would include the hiring manager sending job specifications to a large supplier list of recruitment companies to source for them. And I do say large because there are currently nearly 28,000 recruitment companies in the UK alone. So you can only imagine the competition. Once received, these trusted suppliers would hit the market and call anywhere between five to 30 consultants a day until they found some matches for that job. This would then turn into management receiving five to 20 CVs into their inbox each day and roughly the same amount of phone calls from recruiters to review and discuss those candidates with them. So as you can imagine, this left the hiring manager with a crazy amount of work over and above their own day-to-day -day role. Over and above the rigorous process that that would involve, pre-COVID managers, I would say, were a little stuck in their ways. They preferred to have their own version of what a contractor would be and have them more as a full-time staff member with a short-term span in their company. And instead of having them as a permanent headcount, they would still be able to dictate their presence in the office and their start and their finishing time and how their work was overseen the same way that they would a permanent headcount. Fast forward to now, I'd say post pandemic, I appreciate we're nearly there, we're not completely finished with it, um, but managers have had to put their trust in their own permanent staff for nearly two years now to work from home as much as possible just to comply with COVID rules. Um, and with that, there's been a massive shift and the way organisations are run because that trust has turned into a better work-life balance for their staff, which in turn has turned into better productivity and just an overall better mindset for their staff um, in total. This has then pushed companies into more of a freelance mindset and really convinced managers that the need to have bums on seats as such in their office is not required anymore. Um, and that they're more than capable of hiring freelance consultants to complete tasks to such a high standard without having to treat them like a full-time employee, which is where the freelance revolution, as we call it, starts to happen. So um, I'm going to talk a wee bit about future work. Um, future work is one of these phrases that's become really kind of more relevant over the last two years since the pandemic. And it's also probably one of these phrases that just gets thrown about a lot, but a lot of people maybe don't really know what it means. So Gartner uh, has done a lot of research into the future of work and into the kind of acceleration of technology over the last two years and how we're starting to adapt to it. So they define it as the future of work describes changes in how work will get done over the next decade, influenced by technological, generational and social shifts. So if we look at that in layman's terms, it basically means that the future of work is how people and technology are changing. But I think one thing that we'll probably all notice, especially after some of the sessions yesterday and today, is that the future of work and the term of the future makes it seem as though this is years away, but realistically, it's happening, you know, right now. Um, if looking at freelancing, for example, um, since 2019 in the UK alone, tech roles are up by 42%, uh, according to a Tech Nation survey that was done this year. So technology as a whole is growing rapidly. And as Jen mentioned, the recruitment market can't keep up with this, you know, they can't keep up with hiring permanently to meet project demands because it's simply just not feasible. So due to both a rise in you know, the demand of roles and the impact that COVID's had on the working from home situation, we've seen a huge change in the way that businesses are starting to operate. You know, more and more are starting to hire remote workers, whether they're contractors or whether they're freelancers or whether they're working as side giggers. It's starting to really have an impact on the industry. 
And when you think about it, this makes sense. You know, hiring managers are starting to pick up on this as well. There's more benefits to hiring a freelancer for a six-month project than hiring a new permanent employee who will have nothing to do in a year because the projects are done. So freelancers and gig workers are becoming the future when it comes to the tech space. Again, referring back to Gartner, they did a research document for HR managers that they posted last year. And one of the quotes in it was that gig workers are becoming an indispensable lifeline for growing businesses. Uh, so when you look at all this and you look at the way that companies are starting to review the future work or starting to look at freelancers, they're becoming more and more important in the way that growing businesses are trying to work. So that then increases the demand for freelance platforms, which is where obviously we then come in and the whole point of today's talk. So if we talk about digital platforms and the actual benefits for you guys, so why freelancers want to work with a digital platform, we can look at the likes of making agreements with managers for yourself and really cutting out the middleman. And by middleman, I do mean the recruiter, which as ex-recruiters ourselves might sound a little bad coming from us, but it's the honest truth. Um, being able to set up your own schedule, make your own work hours, make the days that you work, how you do it. If you're on holiday, sunning yourself in Spain, working on your laptop, then so be it. If you want to be involved in multiple opportunities at once, there could be gigs posted on platforms that might only take you a weekend they might take you a week they might take you three months they might take you six months but if you really feel that you have that extra time to complete more than just one opportunity why don't you be able to use your own expertise to advise clients on best practice is probably one of the biggest benefits I've heard as feedback from other um, developers and other freelancers because so often you guys can get so excited about the technologies that you're using and the advancements that it's making and you go into a business that's really old-fashioned and aren't using the the newest tech stack and you're really not being able to use your ability so it makes it a lot easier for you to be involved in fast-growing projects with new exciting tech and really use your own experience to put your own stamp on it essentially make quick cash on short-term projects like I said we've seen some be completed over a weekend or over a week and they're getting a pretty decent payout at the end of that week so if you have a full-time job you can definitely work alongside that and pick up some extra gigs um, and then also connecting with a variety of clients being able to work in so many different places without having to spend two years three years there to keep it on your CV you could be there for three months or shorter or sometimes longer and really get a variety of experience and exposure to all different clients and a multitude of projects. Here, just on the slide deck that we're showing you is some feedback from one of our consultants, Kalpesh, who has now completed three gigs with us on our platform and is very excited to, to move on to his next one. Um, he's absolutely loved the experience that he's had so far and he's been able to, to get some real good experience with a variety of clients through gigs so far. So I like how we did that. Here we go. On to the next slide are some of the platforms that we thought you might be interested in knowing about. Um, so you've got, you know, Juno, Toptal, Worksome, Guru, obviously Gig.ai, Upwork, MVP Match. And on to the next slide, that was just some of the biggest names that I thought you might have heard of already. But on the next slide, we've got a list of the many, many digital platforms that we've got that you can have access to. To give you an example of the way that a freelance platform works, it's probably better to talk about, you know, the one that we're most involved in. You know, we can look at platforms like Upwork and Fiverr, who are obviously the kind of most recognized freelance platforms, but they almost essentially just work as a job board except the only jobs that are there are freelance gigs but what we are trying to do and if you kind of look at other platforms as well that are trying to more have a, a kind of more niche so mvp match for example i think mvp match uh, focus more on software developer projects and um, so obviously for an event like this that's probably a good place to start looking and some platforms will keep it broad and keep it wide, whereas some will more kind of narrow down into a niche of what they're trying to do. So as an example of how it works with, with Gig, we use 
artificial intelligence as almost like a matchmaking system. So sign up to the platform, fill out your job profile with, you know, top skill sets that you've worked on and stuff like that. And then you can be matched with gigs that are ideal for you. Same way if you look at a platform like, uh, you know, Juno, which for us in the UK is one, one of the biggest freelance platforms at the moment. Um, they are focusing again, mainly on tech skills. So, but they are also promoting the remote working side of things. So it's less about having to be based in the UK. You know, you can be based from anywhere, but using, you know, Juno as a platform to find, freelance work with clients based in the UK, you know, if that's something you'd be interested in doing. So freelance platforms as a whole for a freelance community, take away that pain of having to do the networking yourself and having to find the clients and, and do, you know, all the really, you know, the tough selling yourself work of finding, you know, potential clients to work with through, whether it's LinkedIn, I know that some like copywriters, for example, use Twitter as a way to find clients, it's that kind of thing. It takes away the pain of doing it and lets you focus on the bit that you're good at, which is the skill that you're involved in. And for the majority of you, that's programming, whether it's front end, back end, full stack, whatever it is you're focusing on, it lets you divert all of your attention and energy into the actual bit that you enjoy doing rather than all the extra stuff like the admin and the insurance and all that kind of thing. Talent platforms and freelance platforms take that weight off of you and do it for you.